Hey everybody, we're excited to present an essential program entitled Fundamentals, Important Principles in Dermatology. We extend our gratitude to Vaseline, our webinar sponsor for their support. Dr. Chen, we appreciate you taking time to uh, present on this topic. Shall we get started? Of course, I'm thrilled to be here and thank you to all of you for joining today. I'm talking about something that's really near and dear to my heart, which is really the principles of dermatology, just to make this topic a little bit more accessible for everyone who is seeing skin disease. So today we're talking fun dermentals, important principles in dermatology. And perhaps most importantly, and the real basis for this talk today is that the skin doesn't lie. We're going to spend some time on morphology, and then we're going to spend some time on therapeutics. So starting with morphology. When we approach a patient with a rash or a lesion, whatever it might be, that's on the skin that we have to take a look at, I always start with a primary lesion. My tip for you for topical steroids is to pick your favorite class one, class three, and class seven, so you know whenever a rash comes in, depending on how bad the rash is, you've got one ready to go. And then to pick your alternative, because so many insurance plans don't cover this or that one for whatever reason. And so knowing that when it's rejected by insurance, you've got another one to go to is really helpful. So for example, Canada and tinea are very different things. Canada is a yeast. And correspondingly on your exam, I'm thinking more about pustules. And importantly, you can't just throw nystatin or terbinafine at everything. And that's because nystatin has much more activity against candida and terbinafine has much more activity against tinea. When you're examining skin in different skin types, different skin tones, it's important to remember that the findings really stay similar except for color. In patients with darker skin types, um, the color starts to look a little bit more hyperpigmented, and it can also look a little bit more violaceous or purple as opposed to bright pink. We really love to use the word erythematous for almost everything in dermatology, but erythematous really means anything from light pink to dark red. Still see erythema here, and it's like you can, if you're looking for it, you can find it, but it's not going to be this bright red erythematous plaque that people might be used to seeing. The reason is because if you use it too much, it can lead to skin thinning, stretch marks, all of the badness. There are exceptions to the rule. If you put topical steroids on tinea, it turns into something called tinea incognito because it's harder to find, it's hiding, it's in, incognito. Um, and so for that reason, always be careful with your topical steroids. So my take home points for all of you today. Be specific with your physical exam. It often holds the key to diagnosis. Remember that anything scaly can be fungal and that topical steroids can transiently change things. So just because it responds to steroids does not mean it's not infectious. When you're examining rashes in different skin tones, remember that the coloration may change. The rest of the exam may stay, usually stays the same. And if you're using topical steroids, limit it to twice a day for two weeks maximum with appropriate breaks from therapy.